Hello and welcome back to Writerly Witterings with me, the tea-drinking author, Michael Jacks. Cheers. Nice cup of Earl Grey number four from Twinings here, which is a superb Earl Grey, it has to be said. Nearly as nice as Diamine's Earl Grey, which I really think is lovely. So, what have I got for you today? I've got a pause because a delivery's just arrived. Back in a moment. <laughs> And now, let's see if you can tell the difference between me sitting here now and me sitting here about nine minutes ago, just before Damien arrived. The difference is there. Can you see those books? I don't know if I can bend around and reach them. These are The Moorland Hanging, book three in the last Templar series, which first came out in 1990. 26, I think. I'm not sure, actually, now I try to remember. It's, um, let me just see. First published, 1996, yes. And it's got, it's great. It's got praise for my books. Look, the most wickedly plotted medieval, murdery no medieval mystery novels by The Times. Yeah, they're, they're, The Times reviewed it. Scotland on Sunday said Michael Jex is a national treasure. I think they thought I was Scottish, but I'm not going to argue. Atmospheric, cleverly plotted by The Observer. Marvellously portrayed C.J. Sampson. Michael Jex is the master of the medieval Who Done It? Robert Lowe. Very sad. He died far too young a couple of years ago. Lovely bloke, Robert Lowe. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about Moorland Hanging, although if you want to have a copy, it's available at all good bookshops. And if you go and pester them, they will get them in so that you can buy a copy. But I'm here to talk about some ink. My latest dominant industry ink, which is Autumn Forest, in another one of these dinky but really rather beautiful little bottles, which, as has traced it out, pointed out by Tracy last week, are incredibly difficult to open if you're slightly mechanically challenged in your old age and I am so I know exactly what she means but there's also because just talking about ink doesn't take very long I thought I'd also talk a little bit about this the Horizon Helvetica what is it you're asking yourself aren't you well you're going to find out shortly <laughs> so welcome back to a little demonstration of some ink and a fascinating little package first of all just a quick discussion again about the nice way that these people at Dominant Industries send you their inks. They come in a nice little cardboard box. Inside the cardboard box you'll find a tiny pipette, handy for those of you who just occasionally need to move things around, and a bottle of ink in a little canvasy bag. The ink will slide straight down your desk if you're not careful, so I find it's best to hold on to the thing. now. This is one of their Pearl series. That means that when you have a look at the ink, you can see it is full of little shiny shimmery bits. Let's give it a shake. And then, as if by magic, they all disappear. But it does say it is one of the Pearl series, 25 millilitres, which I have to admit is a pretty useful size. It's not so big that you feel guilty never using enough of the ink, but you gradually get through it. Now, this is the interesting bit, trying to open the bottle. When they're fresh, <clears throat> they are really quite stiff. I was mulling which pen to use today, and I've come down in favour of... The lid's trying to go walkabout again. Hold on, stay there. I've come down in favour of my Visconti with the very delightful and simple cartridge converter mechanism. Simply because I haven't used this for a while and I just thought it'd be fun, so... I'm going to fill this with some ink. And then we can see 
what it will be like. I think this is going to be one of those rather fascinating inks because the Pearl series are very nice little shimmering style inks with a great amount of colour usually. I've tried one already which is the Cult Pens Special Edition ink called Dusk which is not a million miles away from me as I speak. It's right here on the desk and again glorious shimmery ink. So which book would I go to apart from my Goulet pens favourite ink testing Tomo River paper um, Kaye, and that's what this is. But before I start, I need a book because you can't write something unless you've got an idea what you're going to write. So here we go. This is what an interesting colour. Industry. A sort of a greenish grey. That is really very interesting indeed. I can't. I, and it has fantastic glitter in it. Wow! I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up particularly well because it's often depends very much on where your point of view is and whether the light's reflecting off those shimmery bits correctly or not. But that, I can assure you, is fantastic. Right, let's see. Now that, I must admit, is a big surprise. I was expecting something sort of brownish, greyish, but this is much more... Wow, what can I say? I think it's a lot closer to something like Alt Goldgrün from Röhre und Klingner than anything else I've seen. It certainly doesn't fit with a brown and in fact it doesn't really fit with many greens. Um, let's see here now. This is Rora und Klingner so it's a lot brighter as a green. This is a great deal darker. This is the dry section and this is still drying so it's taking a while but it's actually not too dissimilar if I look here to Diamine Evergreen. It is a little bit a little bit more brown in the spectrum than straight green as evergreen is. So it, it's a very difficult one to try to bracket this is. Very difficult indeed. Go and have a look at a couple of other greens. Nothing there that's going to quite work. Nope, nothing there. Emerald is far too bright. No, the only things that I can say really that come even remotely close are Altgoldgrün and Diamine Evergreen, but neither of them is quite the same. And for certain, neither of them has the sparkle. 
this has got a really rather lovely shimmer to it. I'm moving the page in the vague hope that the camera might pick up a little bit of sparkle, but in here, in my little viewing chamber, it's unlikely that it'll work because I've got light from three different sources and that means that they sort of cancel each other out. But I would definitely say that is an ink that's worth getting hold of. That's really quite lovely and very different. It's not something I've ever seen before. I love Alt Goldgrün from Röhrer und Klingner but this just has a little bit more interest to it. I really like the way that the shading comes across. You can see that there is quite decent shading across the board here. What I also really like is that it seems to have really good clear outlines to each of the characters I've written. Outlining is when you can see a very clear definition on the line of the ink compared to the plain paper beyond. And this has really rather a lovely outlining. Again, look at the eye here. It starts off with quite a pale grey and then you get the shading with the rest of the stroke. Same here with the S. Same here with the H in hand. The top has faded quite well, giving you a nice shading at the bottom. Same with the D, same with the H, same with the L. So really nice shading, very good outlining and a really thoroughly interesting colour. So now, what on earth is this? I know you're asking yourself, very few of you will have heard of these. This is a company I saw very briefly on Quickstarter last year and I never pay money into these startup ventures because it's never worth it. But this time I did. It cost, I think it was £25 for the actual investment and another four or five pounds for postage, which is bearable. Comes in this nice little container, cardboard, it says measure and create, and it has a nice little flag. Reuse, reduce, recycle. Helvetica is a train trademark of monotype imaging ink registered in the US, paint and trademark office and maybe registered in jurisdictions, etc. Made possible by our Kickstarter backers and supporters who believed in this project. Thank you for making this dream a reality. Nice message. And it's actually a little envelope. So you can open it and inside you will find two things. First of all, there is an instruction manual to tell you what is inside the thing. It is a Horizon Helvetica. You can draw circles with it. Whoops, I, pardon me. You can write up an isometric grid. Don't think I'll ever really need to use that, but you never know. It has a protractor which I used yesterday and is very effective. It can be used as a compass. It can be used to create circles. It has stencils. It has an isometric cube, not just a grid. And it can be used as a T-square if you invest another 30 odd quid, including delivery to get the second, which I won't do. And then it also has a straight edge in metric, straight edge in pixel, Straight Edge Pica and Straight Edge Imperial. OK, so what is this thing? It is a credit card sized protractor ruler sketching tool. And it's fantastic. It is. It really is. It's just ridiculously useful. Um, this side, it is all met, pardon me, all metric. So you've got centimetres down there, you've got what you got here? You've got more centimetres with a zero in the centre so you can measure left and right, same here. And along the top you've got more centimetres. If you go the other side, it's in inches. It is imperial. So you've got quarter, half, three quarter, etc. all the way along. And likewise you've got zero in the centre and measure either way and along the bottom. All exactly the same. So in imperial you here have 
a circle that's three eighths of an inch, you have one that's three sixteenths of an inch, you've got one that's one quarter of an inch. You have a quarter inch sided cube to help you draw um, you know, cubes that are drawn in perspective. And you have a one eighth series of holes here so that you can draw isometric designs one eighth of an inch. You have a protractor that goes all the way zero at the top down to 90 degrees either side. You have holes drilled for the most useful ones, so 90 and 80 and 70 and 60 and 50 and 45 and 40 and all the way down and round the other side. If you go the other side, exactly the same capabilities but the protractor this time goes zero all the way to 180 and this time the cube is six millimeters. You've got isometric set at three millimeters, and the circles are ten mil, five mil. Is that right? Five mil and six mil. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. And then all of these are pixels going along the top, 100, 200, 300, and pica along the bottom. So yesterday. I had to mend a little bit of garden equipment. It was a very delightful old set of wind chimes and the chimes all hung from a circular bit of plastic that has gone the way of all old bits of plastic that are left out in the sun for too long. And so I needed to get a bit of plastic and mark off on it where I needed to drill five holes. Now 360 degrees divided by five, I think they came out at 72 degrees. So I started marking off 72 and then 144 and very soon I had marked off what I needed and where I needed to drill these holes. It was remarkably quick and easy and fun. I mean, it, it had an added bonus that for once my wife was quite impressed with something I'd done. Obviously it's not something that as a husband I expect very often, but it's succeeded in impressing her. So I thought, what a brilliant, brilliant little device. I've completely lost count of where I'm going to there, so I'm going to go back to this side. No, what I've got to do, you see now, it's interesting, I've got to now measure what this was. That was at uh, 10, 20, 30, 6. So now I need to come down here and go 36 again. 36, and that should be about right. Yes, that looks about right. I must admit, making a wind chime so that that, 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 and that are all equal as angles is not normally something terribly easy, but using this little doohickey it was wonderful and I think okay 25 odd 30 pounds whatever it, you want to look at it as it's not exactly the cheapest thing in the world but it's incredibly convenient and it stays in my wallet all the time it's really useful there you go so there you go one more really lovely little dominant industry ink I'm going to hold it up here again because this is slightly better daylight here, I think. I don't know if you can see any of the shimmering there. It's not strong shimmering. It's not like um, a Brandy Dazzle or one of the diamonds of that nature. But rather like their dust, here we go, which is very much an Earl Grey 
as in diamonds Earl Grey. It's a very pleasant blue grey with very good shading and outlining and a lovely little glitter. Autumn Forest does it for me in the sort of blue shades. I think that's really lovely. I'm very, very impressed. In fact, I've so far fallen in love with every single dominant industry ink they've sent me. The winter wood that I showed last time was really quite gorgeous. And Lung, sorry, Lungo I showed last time was really quite gorgeous. And the winter wood the week before is a really gorgeous chocolatey brown as well. Lungo, I've been reminded by various people here on YouTube, um, I was being a fool. Lungo is the name of a type of coffee. And possibly the very slight sparkling in it is supposed to show the crema on the top of the coffee. Whichever way you look at it, though, that Lungo is or lungo is a really gorgeous dark honey coffee color but this autumn forest is totally different totally different it's a greenish gray with lovely shading lovely outlining i'm going to be using that for the next week and seeing how it goes but the other thing of course is the horizon helvetica what a staggering little tool this is. You can really start playing with it in your spare time. It's far better than going straight on to playing Sudoku every five, every five minutes. And it is practical. I am hugely impressed with the detail on this. And it's been a delight to play with it. I don't regret spending the money. And there, on that bombshell, I think it's probably time to stop. So thanks ever so much to all of you. Thanks to my Patreons for keeping the channel going. Thanks to all the people buying me a cup of tea or coffee every now and again. Thanks also to all of the people who sent me cards to say they hope that I get better with this flaming operation. The operation's gone well. The arm is almost impossible to see the scar now. It's embarrassing to complain and say, oh, I can't drive anywhere yet because the doctor said when there's really nothing to show apart from a certain amount of internal bruising. Um, my eyesight apparently has got better. I, for my delight, I went in yesterday to have laser treatment to cure my di diabetic maculopathy. And they tested my eyes again before I went under the laser and the surgeon said, look, don't think it's really worth it because it's gone down in the last two weeks so much that um, I don't think it's worth the risk of the dangers of an operation. So I'm unlasered. The only lasering that there's been done has been produce the numbers on this. And so that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, don't forget, do please go and hit the like button. It's down there with a thumbs up and all that. And next to it, you'll find a subscribe button. If you haven't done that yet, please hit that and then hit the bell because then you're told when a new video is coming out, which is normally every Thursday at five o'clock UK time. And apart from that, there's not a lot else to say, really. I've got a book to finish, so I'd better go and get on with it. In the meantime, if you haven't already read it, do ask your bookshop or your library or both to get hold of a moorland hanging because it will go very well with the last templar and the merchant's partner and all of the other books in the temp last templar series and also it'll go very well with all the books in the jack blackjack bloody mary tudor series so there's lots of reading for you there just go and start reading don't forget about forget about youtube and tv start reading my books it's much better use of your time. Thanks a lot for watching and now I'm going to go make another cup of tea and then edit this video because life's too short to leave these things hanging around. Thanks a lot and speak to you in a week. Bye.